Dave, great to speak to you. It looks like it is going to be Dillian White versus Tyson Fury at the start of next year. Are you pleased that Dillian is finally getting his shot? Yeah, I think it's great that he gets his shot. I think he's earned it. You know, it's been a long time coming. The Joshua fight was uh, December 2015. And since then, you know, he's boxed away. He's been asked of him. So uh, it's good that he gets his shot. And, and we'll see what happens. It's a very difficult one, but uh, he's earned it nonetheless. It's a world title fight, big money involved. So, yeah, I'm happy for him. There was some talk over the last couple of weeks about Anthony Joshua potentially agreeing to some sort of step-aside deal to allow Alexander Usyk to take on Tyson Fury so he would have that undisputed fight. Were you surprised by that at all? Yeah, very surprised. I don't believe that would happen in a million years. Um, I know Anthony. Uh, I knew him years ago quite well. and He's not that kind of character, you know. I think give him all the money in the world. He, want, he wants to beat Alexander Usyk. I'm personally not sure whether he can do that, but um, he, he will not step aside. I truly believe he will not step aside, no matter what the money is. He he wants to he wants to put right that wrong, and you know he's a very um, you know he's a man of integrity and character. And I don't believe he will step aside for any kind of money. He wants he wants to put that right wrong, that wrong right. Let's, even let's take that fight first between Dillian White and Tyson Fury. Now, in the past, we've spoken and you've spoken at length about the admiration you have for Tyson Fury. So, when it comes to Dillian White, what can he do? to try and give himself any hope against the Gypsy King? Well, I boxed Dylan White, and Dylan White beat me 10 rounds to nil. So I don't want to sit here and say that Tyson Fury is a lot better than him, so I'm not sure that would, what would, that would make me. But um, Tyson uh, Tyson has everything. Tyson, for me, is the best everywhere on the planet right now. I think he'll go down as one of the best of all time. So for Dillian, it's a difficult task. Um, Dillian can punch as all every way it can. He's a good body puncher, of course, a body snatcher. He has a good jab. I just think that everything that Dillian is good at, Tyson negates it. You know, Dillian's got a great jab, but he's facing a man that's six foot nine, you know, who's defensively sound, he's got good reflexes, he's got a good jab himself. He's a good body puncher. Good luck getting inside Tyson's uh, reach. Uh, he's a good puncher. I often do see Tyson getting hit, and when he does, he always seems to get back up. He's been hit by the hardest punch ever the last 20, 30 years. You know, it caused him problems, but it didn't, it didn't stop him winning. So, I just think that Tyson got an answer for everything that Dillian will come at him with. But uh, an interesting fight, nonetheless. D Dillian White, for me, is still one of the top 10, possibly top five heavyweights in the world. So it's one of the best fights you can get. I just personally think that Tyson is so far uh, ahead of the pack. I don't, I don't, I don't see him, I don't see him having much of on this fight. When it comes to Dillian's approach, does he have to simply try and go for the knockout? Because it seems unlikely that he's going to, beat Tyson Fury if it comes to a, a boxing contest that does go 12 rounds? Dillian White's a good boxer. He's very underestimated. His boxing ability is underestimated. I underestimated it personally. He's only got better since then. Uh, he can box. I don't think there's a fight on the planet that can beat Tyson Fury over 12 rounds. I know the wild fight, the first one was a draw. I don't believe it was a draw. In terms of rounds, it was probably 9-2, 9-2-1 uh, even, 10-2 to Tyson. So... I don't think there's a man in the planet that can be uh, that can win seven rounds out of twelve in Tyson Fury. So, looking at that, you'd have to say uh, Dylan White's only chance of winning is by knockout. But then we saw Tyson in Wild Two become a wrecking a wrecking machine. So, I don't really think anyone wants to be walking onto that. So, it's so difficult. You know, I'm I'm trying to give you uh, a, a, an explanation as how he can win or why he would win or what he could do to win. But I sit here and in all honesty. There's not much I can tell you, really. I, I, I don't really see a way that he wins. When it comes to that fight, that's going to be in, in February or March. It looks like we will have the rematch between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua in April of next year. Now, we know that AJ got it wrong in that first fight. What does he need to do to give himself a chance of, of winning back his belts in April? I think the most important thing is belief in his self-belief. I watched the last fight and... You know, Usyk won, he won convincingly. He outboxed him, he outthought him. You know, at times he, he beat him in a firefight. You know, he, out, he even out, outpowered him. He, out, he did everything. It was, it was pretty one sided, to be honest. So in rounds, like maybe 10 rounds to two. But Anthony didn't believe in the corner. You know, you're hearing the cornerman, the saying, to play it right, to build confidence. Well, that's what I hear. And I'm thinking, me, you're watching something completely different to me. Great work. That's not great work. No, not at all. You're getting out of box, out of manoeuvre. You can't, you can't face a former cruiserweight king 
you know, Olympic gold medalists. I know they're both Olympic gold medalists, but in terms of boxing ability, there's, there's light years between them. So they, they approached it all wrong. Um, you know, I seen him walking to the ring, asking him for advice from people on the way to the ring. Anthony, he's six foot six, you're 18 stone, you're the heavyweight champion of the world. Where's your belief? Believe in yourself. Get a game plan, you know, train, train and 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 just you know, just believe in that game plan, stick to it, believe in it, and go in the ring and and and, and impose your physical strength and size on 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 Usyk. I don't think we'll see that. I think Usyk's got an answer for everything. Um but I, but I hope for Anthony that he comes out, he believes in himself, you know, and he he, he who who's gonna train him for this fight? What 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 what's what's the deal with that? You know, I would like to see everything finalized, confirmed, and him in the gym and and to beat Alexander Usyk, you need to have a foolproof plan. You need to stick to it. You need to believe in yourself. And if you don't, if you don't do any of them things, if you don't do all of them at hundred percent, you will not beat that man. When it comes to that rematch, are you expecting more of the same then? Because Usyk, we know, is an incredible boxer. You know too well yourself. You've been in the ring with him. You sparred with him. Are you expecting it to be more of the same? I expect Anthony Joshua to, uh, to to make it a completely different match at this time. I think he will try and rush Usyk. Uh, he will try and he will try and impose the physical strength and size. And while and while from personal experience sparring both men, I do believe Anthony is, is by far the bigger, probably the stronger and, and the more powerful. That 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 is not the way to beat Alexander. Um, Alexander's too clever, you know, and he's powered what was causing problems for Anthony in the first fight. And I believe if Anthony is, is to march on to one, he, he will get took out pretty devastatingly. So you know, people said to me, why don't you just take the Zora approach? You know, Zora has success of bowling forward. Anthony's not as physically strong as Derek and he's not as tough, so it's not as easy as that. So the way to beat Alexander Usyk, uh, I know, I think I know how to beat Alexander Usyk. Is there a man alive that can do what is, is necessary to, to beat him? I'm not sure that's a different proposition altogether. I think I know how to beat him. Is there a man out there that can do all the things that it, that it takes? I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't think Anthony Joshua has them uh, attributes to to do to do what is necessary. So I think this time Anthony will take more risks. You know, I think he will come in more confident. I think he will. I think he will come in with a game plan that is aggressive and and he will try and take control of the, of the ring and push him back and use his power. But I think that may leave him uh, open for uh, for use of speed and uh, superior boxing ability. That leads me to the question then: If say Usyk gets past AJ. And Tyson Fury beats Dillian White, and we do have a fight for all the belts next year. Do you think Tyson Fury would go in his favour for that one? Or from what you're saying there, do you think Usyk would be the man to stop? I think as of right now, if you if you price the market up now, you would make Tyson Fury the favourite. You know, he's the he's the uh, he's the man. He's the one who beat the man. He's the one who beat the man twice. Uh, he had the ring magazine belt. Um, he's by far physically the the bigger man, uh, so he would be the favourite. A lot will depend on the next fight, you know. If um, Alexander beats Anthony in convincing fashion and Tyson struggles to to beat Dilly, and the, the the fight changes again, of course, both men have to win. Um, I, I believe the only man that is capable of beating Alexander Usyk is Tyson Fury. And I think the only man capable of beating Tyson Fury is Alexander Usyk. So for me, it will be the best heavyweight fight probably since I would say Ali Fraser. I think it, I think it's that big. I think the fight would be that big. Two massive curves as well, and I really, you know, nothing against Dylan White and Anthony Joshua. You know, I respect them both hell of a lot. But Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury for all the belts will be one of the biggest fighters in the his history of boxing. That's an incredible prospect when you think about that. A, a very different prospect this weekend, I guess, it is Derek Chisora against Joseph Parker. What are your thoughts on that? Is that something that that excites you? What do you think happens this time around? I think I think I should say that excites me, but I'd be lying. It it doesn't really fill me with much joy. I'll be at a local amateur show with my amateur fighters. I won't get to watch the fight. Probably shouldn't say that, but um, I won't be watching it. It doesn't fill me with too much joy. The first fight was these these are two men that I see here now. If I was a boxing fan that I'd never watched before, I could say this, but because I'm too heavyweight, that's not as good as them two. People are going to say what you're talking about, but it doesn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't the greatest fight the first time. Uh, I thought Josie Park won it by a couple of rounds. Um, this is Derek Zora's last roll of the dice. He'll come and give it everything. He's been a fantastic servant to the game. He's been he's been unbelievable, uh, unbelievable fighter. You know he's been he's boxed everybody. He's boxed Tyson Fury twice. But Klitschko, he's been everywhere. I love Derek. Everyone, everyone's a Zelboy fan. Um, 
I just think that Joseph Parker is still only 29, 30 years of age. He's the one who's going to improve. He's the, he's the man with a little bit of improvement to eke out. And I think Park will will win. And I think he may get a stoppage win this time around. I think it will be a better fight than the first time. I think Park will look to give himself a little bit more space, you know, and get some shots off. Because last time the fight was, it, it, it wasn't the easiest fight on the eye to watch. So the only way that this fight can be uh, exciting is if Park gives himself some space and goes back to the Joseph Parker of old. The Joseph Parker, you know, pre-world title was exciting. It was one of those exciting prospects in the world of boxing. So I hope we go back to that. Um, you know, a big big Delboy fan, and him winning would, would give me lots of joy. Is is stay around in the game a little bit longer, keep entertaining. But I think there's more upside to Parker winning. I think Parker can win, he can improve, and you know he can go back and he can he can challenge the world titles again. I was going to ask you that as the next question. What do you think is it at stake for the winner if Parker wins and he, and he wins in a convincing fashion? Do you think he puts himself back in that mix? Yes, he probably wouldn't get a world title shot next year, but does he put himself back in that conversation because? It's not really a conversation he's been in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think so. I think Park is a very good fighter. You know, he's a former as a former world champion, he's always going to be in the mix. You know, he's always former world heavyweight champion. He's got that name value, and if he can beat uh, if he can beat Derek and he can do it in good fashion, he's only going to be one fight away. But on on the flip side, if Derek comes in like we've seen him before the tack on fight, we all wrote him off in the tack on fight. We've wrote him off loads of times. So. Um, if he wins, he's probably one fight away as well. The winner of this is one fight away from the Heavyweight Championship of the World. So, um, both men will be up for it. And now that I've talked about it a little bit, I'm a little bit more excited than I was five minutes ago. I've got myself excited for it now. So, hopefully it's a great fight. And hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm, I just hope it's a good fight. Whoever wins, I'm a fan of both. So, I, I'd be happy to uh, I'd be happy to see either man win. And there'd be nothing better than seeing Derek Zorro go on to fight for the Heavyweight Championship of the World. And when it comes to those other contenders outside the likes of Dillian White, AJ, Usyk and Tyson Fury, are there any other heavyweight contenders that, that you think could have a big year next year and get themselves in contention to, to take on one of these boys at some stage? Well, I think there's, there's lots of them. The heavyweight division right now is, is booming. You've got Philip Hergovic, Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce, Jared Anderson. There's numerous. There's lots of them. You know, obviously, it's, I'm selective. So I, I keep my eye on the division. And the ones that I just mentioned, they're the ones you probably want to stay away from. You know, Joe Joyce for me is a problem for everyone. Joe Joyce for me is probably a, a top five guy right now. He hasn't got the resume to go with that because he's avoided, but Joe Joyce for me is a big problem for everyone. So you know, you've got the likes of him, you've got the Hergovic, you've got Yoka. Yoka fights Bacoli. But the winner of that fight is only one or two away. So uh, the heavyweight division for me is as good as it's been, you know, probably, probably in my lifetime. It's great. You know, we're going back to probably the, the mid 90s with Lewis, Tyson, Holyfield, Bo, you know, and I would say the fighters we've got now, you know, we're, we're finally getting finally getting back there now. The heavyweight division again is, is, is the glamour division. You know, Canelo and Crawford and a few of us aside, the heavyweight division is where it's at. I know you've got a good relationship, a lot of respect between yourself and Alan Babich. But from what you've seen from him, I mean, what do you think the potential is for him? You talk about those names in the heavyweight division. Do you think he's got it, what it takes to be in that conversation at some stage? Uh, in, in, in a word, no, no. He's nowhere near them guys. He's, he's a million miles away. Um, the, Alan Babbage for me is a, is a cruiserweight, bridgeweight. I think he can be a world class cruiserweight and bridgeweight. Uh, heavyweight is too small. He's too small. Uh, you know, Tyson Fury, uh, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Wilder. Look at these men. Six foot six, six foot seven, six foot nine. You know, I, I, I was I was a good heavyweight. Six foot three. I boxed David Price. Couldn't even reach him. You know, Alan Babbage is smaller than me, so. For me, Alan Babich, Alan Babich is underrated. He's a, he's a, he's a good fighter, you know, a good amateur. He has a good amateur pedigree. and People don't see that. I think he's just a brawler. I know for a fact he can switch it up, but you don't be out of boxing six foot seven, six foot eight fighters you know, that, have got, that have got great amateur pedigrees as well. So it'd be interesting when he steps up. I, I would like, I, I don't want to see him lose. The only man I want to see beat Alan Babich is me. No one else. You know, I'm hoping to get to him early next year before anyone else does. But uh, if that doesn't happen, I would love to see him go and campaign at Cruiseway or, or the new Bridgeway. And I want to see him succeed again. Massive fan of Alan Babbitt. It's the same as I'm a Dirk Zora, Joseph Park. I'm a fan of all these. So I want to see him all succeed. And, and Alan Babbitt, especially, you know, we, we have a good relationship. We speak, we speak quite often. And uh, unless he's boxing me, I wish him only success. Well, let's come back to you then, finally. You said earlier you're still an active heavyweight. What yeah. is the latest with you? What are you going to do next? Have you still got the hunger? 
Yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting for the opportunity, you know. Uh, when I bought before I bought David Price, I had the world at my feet. I thought I was looking at million pound houses, and a lot it was great. I was ready to fight as Andrew Povetkin, and I thought we'd get the Anthony Joshua fight. Um, and now I was sitting, and I was just waiting for the phone to ring for an opportunity, you know. Um, so yeah, we just wait. But at, at 23, 24, 25, I had, I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. I thought everyone was against me, and I thought, oh, it's never going to work for me. But now, you know, I, I just sit here and wait. You know, keep 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 training, be prepared. And when the phone rings, it's up to me then to take that opportunity. So we'll see. The hunger's still there. You know, the desire. You know, lots of people wonder why I'm coming by. Is it for money? Is it for this? Is it for that? It's just it's just for glory. You know, I genuinely want to come back. And I, I think I took for granted where I was a few years ago, headlining the O2. I sit in and I think, I want my going back there and this time enjoying it. So I want to go back to where I was and this time I want to enjoy it and take it all in because last time I just felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders and I never got to take it in and enjoy it because I, I, I was, you know, it, it was a bit too much on me. But I think now I've matured a lot over the last couple of years. I think I'm a better fire as well and um, just waiting for the opportunity to show it. But I believe it will come. So, uh, yeah, I don't worry these days anymore. I don't worry anymore, you know. Whatever will be, will be. And if it's for me, it won't pass me. So it's just a matter of waiting. And you've given us some incredible nights. Um, the Nick Webb night was one of those great nights at the O2. And then you had Lucas Brown as well. And, and you had such a great relationship with Darren Barker at that time as, as well. When you look back on those nights, does that give you the feeling that I want to experience it again? If I don't do that again, I'll always regret it. Yeah, I miss it. But I'm, I'm not deluded. If, if there was nothing left, I would know and I've never been seen on the canvas. You know, I've bought some of the best in the world. I've never been on the floor. So I'm not coming back to, to get paid to lay down because that's that's just not in my... Uh, that, that's not me as a person, you know. I would never come back to, to lose. I'm coming back to win. And of course, I want them great moments. I, I, I want it all again. And, but if I didn't believe that it was possible, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come back. I wouldn't be back. So, you know, the message is clear. You know, give me the notice. Give, 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 me, the, uh, give me the venue. Give me the time. And I'll bring you the entertainment. So, uh, so yeah, just watch this space. I'm, I'm ready whenever the phone goes.